All right, Algebra 1, so we left off with this one last week, and uh, actually I made a goof on your homework. I believe I gave you numbers 17 through 20, and numbers 19 and 20 were like this one. That was not my intention. I only meant to give you 15, 16, 17, and 18, where it was only foiling. It was only ones like this, where it was a binomial times a binomial. So that was my mistake, but you may or may not have been able to figure it out. And I did give you the answers on purpose so that you'd be able to check your work. I will probably continue to do that whenever and wherever possible so that when you do the work, you can see if you're getting it right or not. And if you're not and you can't figure it out, then you could message me and uh, and we can, we can talk you through it. To do one like this, you need to distribute. So this z squared needs to multiply 5z and plus two. The negative three z needs to multiply the 5z and the plus two. And the positive one needs to multiply the 5z and the plus 2. Now I could do arrows here, but it's going to get really, really funky and messy and probably do more damage than good. So uh, I'll just talk through each product one by one. z squared times 5z is going to be 5z cubed. Man, that was really sloppy. z squared times plus 2 is going to be plus 2z squared. So now I've multiplied this z squared times both of those. Now I move on to my negative 3z. Negative 3z times 5z is going to be negative 15z squared. Negative 3z times plus 2 is going to be negative 6z. And now I move on to the 1. 1 times 5z is going to be plus 5z, and 1 times 2 is going to be plus 2. And now I have six products down here. Now you can see there are like terms. There are friends here that can combine. This plus 2z squared and minus 15z squared can combine. This minus 6z and plus 5z can combine. So what's that going to give us? Negative 2 minus 15 is going to be negative 13z squared. Negative 6 plus 5 is just going to be a negative 1z. Don't forget to bring down that plus 2. Don't forget to bring down that 5z cubed. And there is your final answer. This arrow right here is really for that term right there, not the plus 2. But there you go. It's just, you know, an extension of the FOIL property, but you can't use the word FOIL here. FOIL only works when you have two binomials. And, and this process would be the same no matter what kind of polynomials you were multiplying. Everything in the one set of parentheses needs to multiply each and every term in the other set of parentheses. That's how you would do these. Next, we are going to talk about factoring polynomials. So this is something that I really, really wish we were in class for, but you know, we're gonna have to do the best we can here. Hopefully we will get the gist of it here. So basically whenever you're factoring, you're basically undoing multiplication. Remember that factors multiply each other. So like for example, when you are factoring the number six, now six is not a polynomial, six is just a number, but if you were factoring six, it would factor into three and two. Why? Because three times two gives you six. You could also factor six or any number for that matter into one times itself, so one times six. Those are the factors of six. Now we are gonna do that same process here, but with polynomials. So we are gonna try and break these down. I got three different polynomials written here. All right, and the reason why is because each one of them is a different type of factoring that we will learn. So I'll show you them all. Okay, so this first one over here. So whenever you're factoring polynomials, across the board, always, whenever you're factoring polynomials, you always want to look for a greatest common factor. And that includes the coefficient and the variable factors of each term. Is there a factor that is common to both of these terms here, the x squared and the x. Now the coefficients here are just one, so you don't need to worry about that. But you know, if we had like a 4x squared and a 10x, 10x, that would be a different story, but we'll get there. Here with x squared plus x, the greatest common factor is x. Does this have one factor of x? Yeah, as a matter of fact, it has two factors of x. Does this have one factor of x? Yes, it is just one factor of x. So what do they have in common? They have one factor of x in common. We are going to pull out that greatest common factor and we write it in front of a set of parentheses. Out front here 
is the GCF of all of your terms in the polynomial. And in this instance, it's just X. And now you divide, essentially, is what you're doing, is dividing. I have an X squared. If I divide out one of those X's, then only one of those X's remains. Here, I have a plus X. If I divide out X divided by X, I get just one. And I have now factored what I started with here, X squared plus X, into two factors that will multiply to give me that. X on the outside, X plus one on the inside. You check your work here using the distributive property that we learned last week, okay, and the week before. Does X times X give me X squared? Yes. Does X times one give me X? Yes. So if I distribute this X through, do I get what I started with? I do. And that's why that is the factored polynomial, right? That's what you're doing. Your answer here is the factored polynomial. And this was just simply GCF, greatest common factor. Now, over here is a trinomial. Like I said a moment ago, always look for a GCF. Does this have a greatest common factor? The answer here is no. Do they all have at least one X? Well, this one does, this one does, but this one doesn't, so no. Do they all have a common factor other than one in terms of the coefficients? So I got a one, I got a negative two, and I got a one. No, the GCF there is one. So you don't need to worry about GCF here. There is no greatest common factor other than one that comes out. Now, where do we go? Well. This is what I like to call, quote unquote, unfoiling. We need to break this apart into the two binomials that will multiply to give me that. We know these firsts will multiply to give me that. So what factors multiply to give me X squared? Well, you're gonna go X and X. Here's what happens. I like to do a little A and a little M. What the heck is Swenson talking about, A and M? Well, I need to put here, and here, for my quote unquote lasts, two numbers that will add to negative two and multiply to give me positive one. Now this one is super easy because what are the only numbers that multiply to give me one? Well, one and one are the only numbers that will multiply together to give me that one. If I need them to add to negative two, well then I need to make them both negative because a negative one plus a negative one will give me a negative two. So now what, again, we're looking for the two numbers that go in this, I wanna, I don't wanna booger this diagram up too bad. For the numbers that go in this spot and this spot that will add to negative two, multiply to one. So you think of your factors of one that will add to negative two. This is the answer here. Now, if you foiled this, you'd get what you started with. X times X is X squared. Outers minus one X, inners minus one X. That's gonna give you minus two X, and then your lasts would give you your plus one. So this is what I like to call unfoil, although that's not an official term. I don't think you'll see that in any textbooks anywhere. It's more commonly known as just trinomial factor. Trinomial, I know that's kind of boring, factor, but that kind of is the way it is. This one over here, what are you looking for here? Always GCF? We don't have one. They don't have an X in common. They don't have a number other than one in common. So there is no GCF. Always look for your GCF first. Obviously this is not trinomial factoring because this is not a trinomial. But you know what this is? This is what's known as dots or difference. D, oh, that's an I, not an O. D-I-F-F-E-R-E-N-Z. Difference of two squares, S-Q-U-A-R-E-S. Or I should maybe, difference of two perfect squares, but D-O-T-P-S doesn't spell a nice word, so we just call it dots, all right? Difference of two squares. This factors into two binomials super easy. X squared means X and X go there. Negative 25 means plus five minus five. That's how it works every time. The square root of the first term goes here and here, the square root of this term goes here and here, and it's a plus and it's a minus. So you're looking for the difference, minus, of two squares. X squared is a perfect square, 25 is a perfect square. If this was X squared minus 24, it's not dots. It's only dots if this number is a perfect square and if that number is a perfect square. If it was X squared minus 20, 
not dots. If it was x squared minus 10, not dots. If it was x squared minus nine, nine's a perfect square, we'd have x plus three, x minus three. If it was x squared minus 100, 100 is a perfect square, x plus 10, x minus 10. These ones are super easy. The trick is just recognizing when you have one. You foil this, you'll work back to that. You will get x times x, x squared. You will get minus 5x and plus 5x when you do your outers and your inners, your oi. Minus 5x plus 5x. Well, that's zero. It goes away. Notice there's no middle x term in here. And then when you do your lasts, plus 5 times minus 5, you'll get your minus 25. So again, when you foil this, you'll get back to that. Whenever you do, you, we are undoing multiplication. Anytime you factor, that's what you're doing. So whenever you're giving an answer that you are claiming is factored, you better make sure that when you multiply those factors, you get what you started with. And that was all of last week's work, learning how to multiply those factors. These are the three different kinds of factorings we're gonna learn. I'm going to give you some work tonight on just some greatest common factor work, just this one. Okay, let's take another look at a greatest common factor here. We have 6x squared, we have 6x squared minus 9x. So let's start with the coefficients because this one up here, our coefficients were just one. We didn't have to worry about that, but here our coefficients are not one, so we do have to worry about that. Six and nine, as Algebra One students, I would expect that you'd be able to tell me that the GCF of six and nine is three. Three is the biggest number, the greatest number that divides evenly into both six and nine. So we're gonna pull out a three, but that's not all we're pulling out because don't they both also have an X? This one has two factors of X, that one has one. So they have one factor of X in common. So the GCF here is three X. And now we open up our parentheses and we divide it out. What is six divided by three? Well, that's two. And what is X squared divided by X? That's just one X. Okay, one factor of X, I should say. Obviously, we're gonna have a minus here. Nine divided by three is three. X divided by X goes away. It's just a factor of one. And now we have successfully factored 6X squared minus 9X. We have factored it into 3X parentheses, 2X minus 3. Again, check your multiplication to see if it gives me what we started with. Is 3X times 2X going to be 6X squared? 3 times 2 is 6. X times X is X squared. Beautiful. Is 3X times negative 3 going to be negative 9X? 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. X times the 1 is just X. Yes, it works. All right, let's take a look at another one here. 4y cubed, as I shake the camera, 4y cubed plus 10y squared. Coefficients of four and 10. What's the greatest common factor? Two. So we pull the two. Now, y cubed, y squared. What's gonna be the GCF there? This is three factors of Y. This is two factors of Y. How many factors of Y do they have in common? It's not one factor of Y they have in common. It's two factors of Y they have in common. They both have two factors of Y. So our GCF here is two Y squared. We open our parentheses. Four divided by two is two. Y cubed divided by Y squared is just Y plus 10 divided by two is five. Y squared divided by Y squared is just one. Here is our factored polynomial. You've got yourself 2y squared times 2y, that's gonna be 4y cubed, beautiful. 2y squared times five is gonna be plus 10y squared, and it works. So I gave you a little preview into the three different types of factoring we're gonna do. Factoring out of GCF, unfoiling or trinomial factoring, the difference of two squares factoring. I'm gonna give you some work this week just on GCF, but what I do wanna tell you is that sometimes you'll be doing more than one of these. Sometimes you'll factor out a GCF and then what remains will be a trinomial that can be factored itself. So you'll have to do a second round of factoring. This was a, a little bit of a longer than normal video. Y'all have a great week. Peace out. Thumbs up. It's tough to do thumbs up because the camera is so close. So here we go. Watch this. You ready? Boom. Have a nice week. Catch you later. Pero pa'lante porque lo de atrás sí me dolió No me da pena escribir que fuiste un error También fuiste mi mejor lección, de hecho 